I already touched a little bit on this throughout the service, but we're just going to go ahead and um, we're going to go ahead and just get to it. Amen. Uh, we're going to be coming from Colossians chapter three, verses one through four, and then we're going to jump to Colossians twenty uh, two, verse twenty, and then we're going to jump to Romans six, ten through eleven. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, what Christ setteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Amen. One of the things that really highlights to me is for ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ. All right, it sounds like something like Lewis, you'd put that into a, a poem with the dead and hid and the rhyming and everything, right? <laughs> but you are dead for ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. What does that mean? What does it mean when Christ, who is our life, shall appear? Then shall ye also appear with him in glory. <clears throat> what does it mean if ye then be risen with Christ? Seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. What does it mean? What are we talking about? This stuff sounds good. It sounds deep and whatever, but what does it mean? How do we, how do we come into agreement with these realities that's being revealed to us? Well, we're going to jump to Colossians two twenty. Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why, as though living in the world, are ye subject to ordinances? Ordinances, laws, things written in uh, curses, generational curses, all of these things, ordinances, fall under ordinances, right? If ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, what's the rudiments of the world? Well, we've been talking about it all service. It's the elementary things, it's the base things, it's the shut the door, it's the base things. It's if I am. Uh, exposed to an infectious disease, or if I'm exposed to a, a contagious whatever, I get it. If I begin to cough or get an itchy throat, oh man, I'm I'm about to get sick. All of these things, right? All of these things are rudiments of the world, the natural world. But I have to not be lowered due to. All of these things are part of our natural existence. But what we're dead to those things. Uh, an, another rudiment of the world, um, for lack of better terms, tit for tat, uh, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. These are all natural. But if we're dead with Christ, we're dead. We have been, we have died. Essentially, we have died from the natural order of the world. You name it. The things that we learn coming up as children so we can survive in a natural world. Like these things are natural. They're not necessarily sinful. They're natural. But they're, the natural is, the natural is in conflict with the realities of the kingdom, as, as we talked about with, with the dog. The dog was sick. The dog looked like it was going to die. And naturally, yo, let everybody prepare for the death of this dog. Naturally, there's nothing wrong with preparing. Naturally, let's everybody prepare so we won't be surprised, so we know how to handle it. We won't be, oh, right? That's natural. That's a natural rudiment of the world. But there is something greater that we live by. There is someone greater who we live in. 
where then the brother said, you know what? No, I'm not going to agree with that at all. The dog is going to live. He's going to be healthy. He's going to be whole in Jesus' name. But This is what it's going to be. That's being dead to the rudiments of the world. Why? Because naturally, yeah, the dog's about to die. You cannot knock anybody. That, that dog's going to die. His eyes are rolling in his head. He's, he's moving around like he's poisoned. He's, he's about to die. But there's a greater work, a greater law here at play of being alive in Christ Jesus, being an oracle of God, being a mouthpiece. I'm an oracle. I'm a mouthpiece. Speaking for Talk to somebody and and talk to somebody this week and I'm like, look, you you didn't had this happen, you didn't had that nightmare, this nightmare, you're not gonna have any nightmares. This is going, you have a good night's sleep, da, 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 and let me know. I didn't pray. I didn't pray for the person. Oh, Father, please cancel the nightmares, let the nightmares go. Da, 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 da. Oh, you devils of nightmare. No, you're gonna have a good night's sleep. This is what it's gonna be. Do we believe that if Christ said, Cody, you're going to have a good night's sleep. You're going to rest well. Actually it, was two, actually, it was two people this week where we've had these conversations. Not just one. It's been two people about nightmares, not being able to sleep, and da 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 Jesus, do we believe that if Jesus was here and he spoke, oh, Cody, you ain't going to have no nightmares. Do I trust that if that's what the word of God said, Cody ain't going to have no nightmares, that I'm going to have good sleep. The scripture said he gives the, his beloved good sleep. You're going to have good sleep. You ain't going to have no nightmares. Or do I think that I, I got all God in, in Jesus' name. Oh, Father, Shumbodo, by T T. I mean, and that, that's cool. If that's where we are, it's cool. I'm saying it's cool. But as we talked about earlier, there's a growth to this. There's a growth to this. My, again, I, I have three boys, so I like to use them in, as an example. Um, if I had a big dog, and one day I might get a big dog, a king or so, right? Big boy. Um, if I have a big dog, and I'm teaching my sons the commands, and my my 22 year old's about my size. He's not my weight, but he's about my size, and so I teach him the commands: hey, sit, whatever, right? And he's like, sit, whatever, and the dog's listening. Then my medium boy. He's like, sit, sit. The dog might still be trying to do it. Then he stands as an authority more, sit, sit. And the dog sits. But if my little one is like, sit, sit, <laughs> sit. And the dog's doing whatever it wants to do. This is elementary stuff. He's a kid. He's in a place where he needs to grow. Actually, matter of fact, he did it with my mom's dog, a little Yorkie. You know what I mean? I'm like, Peppa, come here. Peppa comes over, sit, lay, whatever. She laid down. And then I'm like, boy, call the dog. And he's like, Pepper, <laughs> Pepper, come here. Pepper, dog ain't moving. I like Jack, Jack, say it like you mean it. Pepper, come here. Then dog gets the dog's attention and he, then she, but she don't fully come. And I'm like, say it again, say it like you mean it. You know, sometimes we say things, it's like, <laughs> it's a hope, huh? It's a, it's not really with the, the tone or the authority that's necessary for the situation as with the case of the dog. But that's a rudimentary thing. That's elementary. That's the beginning principles. But as we begin to grow up and understand, we understand that we've gone from death unto life. For ye are dead and your life, we talk about being dead and we talk about having life at the same time. But your life is hid with Christ in God. My life is hid in God. What weapon formed against me shall prosper? Because if I am hid in God, if, we have use some examples? We'll use, we'll use this. We got this cup. Um, I got to see the screen. We have this cup. Yeah, it's a Batman cup. All right? And they have this lighter here. Can we see the lighter? If this lighter is hid in the Batman cup, how do you get to the lighter without getting past the Batman cup. How do you get to the lighter without getting through the Batman cup? 
your life is hid in Christ. But when something's presented, look, this is a see-through cup. I don't know if you can tell, you can kind of see through it. But when something's presented, here we go, oh God, the enemy's attacking. He's after me. No, the enemy ain't touching you. He's presented something to you. He's presented something to you, but he has not gone inside the cup and removed you because your life, <laughs> I didn't go to cup, but your life is hidden Christ. Hope this is making sense. So we talk about no weapon formed against you so prosper. That's another Isaiah passage and that's fine, right? But when we come up into Colossians, it says that he disarmed the enemy, putting him to an open shame, parading the victory over him. So the enemy is disarmed. So there is no weapon that can be formed against you. It's all a presentation. A presentation to get you to agree. Cody, that when you were in the, the room with your dead deceased uncle for an hour or more, speaking over them, laying hands on them with the dead body. Police came in and out and you're still in there. No, oh, you ain't seeing nothing, Cody. This ain't never going to work. And I didn't see nothing with my uncle. They, they went ahead and buried him. But the enemy presents these elaborate lies to you. Oh, oh you, you should never do that again. Somebody goes to walk out on the reality of healing. Oh, but I prayed for this person. I laid hands on them. I spoke to it, and they still walked away in pain or this, that, or the other. Man, that's foolish. I should never do that again. These are the lies of the enemy presenting to you. Why? Because in that area, there's a need for growth. My life is hidden in Christ, but do I understand the, react, the depth of what that is? Do I truly understand it? If I truly understand it, and thank you for shaking your head yes, but if I truly understood it, I would see all the things that Jesus saw. And if I don't see all the things that Jesus saw, that means, look, I'm growing. That's all good. Thank you, Jesus, I'm growing. There's no way that my, my nine-year-old can see everything his 40-year-old dad knows or has been through. There's no way. He can't see it all at this point. But when he's older, he can begin to understand what it is to be a man, what it is to, to, to father children, what it is to be married to a woman. At this age, he has no idea. And that's okay. We don't beat ourselves up because we're not there, but we keep moving towards the mark of the high calling of Christ. Forgetting those things which are behind, we reach forward toward the mark of the high, of the high calling in Christ Jesus. So we're dead unto the rudiments of the world. We got to understand what that means consistently. Oh, wait. Uh, this person had COVID, they hugged me, that person had COVID, and, and this is stuff that's happened. This person had COVID, they hugged me, that person, I've been locked in a small room with this person and they had COVID, I ain't quarantined myself. The rudiments of the world says you're going to get COVID. Ready for some downtime. And the person I'm locked in the room with was sick, sick, sick. They recovered, but they were sick, sick, sick. Coughing and breathing and the door shut and everything. But you know what? The rudiment of the world says, get ready, it's coming. But my life being hidden, Christ says, no, in Jesus' name, I thank you. I thank you that I'm hidden you. I thank you that as the stuff gets presented to my body, my body cancels in Jesus' name because I am so I'm a new creation. Old things being passed away, all things becoming new. My body reacts to the sickness differently. It sounds like fairy tale until you live it. It sounds like make believe until you live it. And you're able to consistently live it, live it, live it. It becomes a reality. It's a, it's a natural walk. When the supernatural becomes natural. Last scripture I'm going to read Romans 6 10 through 11. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, Reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, 
but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So not only are we dead to the rudiments of the world, we are dead to sin. When we have been born again, I, in Jesus' name, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I die with you. I rise with you. I am dead to sin. But as the scripture continues, it says, therefore, let not sin reign in your mortal body. You're dead to it. Why are you going to let it have the throne in how you function? How are you going to let it have the throne in how you think, how you perceive the world? So what we're dead unto sin, we've been set free from those chains of bondage. But in that he liveth, he lives under God. So us, likewise, we reckon outside, I understand myself also, I'm dead indeed unto sin, but alive under God through Jesus Christ. So that means even when the, one of the ways that we really know, and I've been sharing this during baptism, one of the ways that we really know that we have been born again, we have the spirit living on the inside, is our desire to sin changes. So, so whether I'm speaking in tongues or not, when I ask Father, fill me with your Holy Spirit, and I'm waiting, and I'm, I'm, there's, a, there's this battle going on within the, the carnal mind and the mind of Christ. One way that you know, but, but which takes time, it's like, dang, I used to do this. I'm not even feeling that no more. I'm not even feeling that no more. I thought I used to like fornicating. I thought I used to like, yo, you, you, you got big on me, I'm going to get big on you back. I thought I liked throwing hands, teaching you a lesson. I thought I liked all of this stuff, name it, lying to get my way. But when I did it, there was this conviction of righteousness inside of me, not a condemnation, a fear of damnation and no hope. No, there's this conviction. Oh, dang. You get, I shouldn't have done that. Dang. Yeah. But when we're walking on our own sometimes, this is what we'll try to do. We'll try to stuff it down. Eh. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I did it. it. It didn't feel good, but you know what? <clears throat> I'm going to stuff it down so I can keep thinking carnal-minded. But the conviction is that, man, I know. I was right in what I said to this person, but dang, how I said it, though. I could have said it better. And the, the, the reason this person's uh, really upset ain't really because of what I said, though they didn't like it, but it's how I said it. And that conviction of righteousness. Look, there will be offenses in the kingdom. There will be offenses. But is it going to be offense because I let the flesh get involved or is it going to be offense because the lies don't like the truth? I am dead indeed under sin. This is why we, another reason we're not walking around saying, oh, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. I'm dead under sin. I'm not going to call myself a sin anymore. I'm alive unto God through Jesus Christ. Matter of fact, I am the righteousness of God. I am the right standing with God. This is what God says about us. I'm not making that up. This is what he says about us. That you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. If that we believe in what he's done, he's taken on my life so I can take on his life. I stand before God righteous. I can boldly approach the throne and let my supplications be made known with thanksgiving. Why not? Because, oh, but Lord, I messed up. I, uh, me, and, me and Brother Lewis had a bad argument the other day and we was cussing, we was spitting. We was done and we didn't. <laughs> we was cussing. We was just that the other. Now nah, I'm gonna go hide in the corner. I can't go to God now because I refuse to believe what it is that He said. I won't go to Him because I refuse to believe what He said because I can only see the presentation. I can only see where, as a child in this area, I wobbled and walked, and then I fell. Anybody that has a kid that learned how to walk never kicks that kid when they fall and say, you dumb baby. I've said this before, but we hear you dumb baby. How, you, how dare you fall? No. Come on, get up. Get up, boy. Come on, let's do it again. Yo, you see him walk? I've never heard a parent talk about, my child took three steps and fell. I've never heard a parent. Maybe there's some parents that do that. I've never heard. I've never done it. My baby took three steps and then they fell. Oh, all you hear is my baby took three steps. Yo, you see his first steps. How much more God for us? Ah, oh, he's walking. He's building those leg muscles. Heck, even if they fall and, and hit the ground hard. Okay, no, no, get up. We'll, we'll learn. 
They're going to learn to walk a little better next time. They're going to learn to support themselves <laughs> when they fall and hit the ground. There's a little bit of a scrape or a little bump. How much more in the spirit, fam? Our life is another thing that we did to. We did unto the law, but we're not going to go into that this week. <laughs> We are dead unto sin. We're dead unto the rudiments of the world. And as we talk about the rudiments and the elements of the world, Galatians 3 talks about it. Uh, a child uh, is no different than a servant, but he's under tutors and, and teachers until the fullness of time. He's under the elements of the world until the fullness of time where he matures. As a matter of fact, these elements are under me. These elements are under me, the stars, the sun. They, 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 I haven't been made for them. They've been made for me. I can see the things of God, the realities of God when I look at his creation. They're under me. But until my mind uh, 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 graduates to the point, I think that. I think that I'm experiencing this, but actually it's experiencing you. Why? because all of creation is waiting for the sons of God to manifest. Last thing, as far as on this vein of, of being under the elements and then shifting in the elements onto you, I'll never forget this. It was one of the, it was a couple years ago. Um, it was it was a really, it was a dumb, it was a dumb hot day. And I'm down there on the tennis court and I'm getting the grass out of the, out of the, uh, this, this type of, as, not asphalt, some type of covering, the green stuff where the grass grows up to, and I'm plucking the grass, and it was like stupid hot. And I, I remember um, I was growing my faith and exercising my faith in this area. And I'm like, I begin to speak to the wind. Right? Call it what you want. I begin to speak to the wind, understanding that all of creation is waiting for the sons of God to manifest. Jesus spoke to the winds and the waves. He rebuked it. He spoke to the winds and the waves. I begin to speak to the wind. I need a breeze. It's hot. I need cool me off. I don't remember exactly what I said. Cool me off. Da, 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 da. Moments later, it wasn't immediately, but was it then five minutes? And as as I said it, and I just began to thank God. That's what I do when I ask for something or I, I I put a command out there. I don't like to. I thank you, oh God, oh God, please, oh God, oh God. When I don't like to, uh, but do this. Do that wind blow, wind blow, wind blow, wind blow, wind blow, blow. and that's fine if that's what with somebody that's listening does. This is where I am, and that's you know that's just that. And so I'll shift to Thanksgiving, Father. I thank you that the winds hear me because they hear you. I thank you, Father, that the winds are gonna right. I do this thing right, and within I say maybe five minutes, I start to feel this, which that's facing the south. I started to feel this wind blow from the south. It was such a refreshing wind. Like it, I, it was it was a big wind that just started to blow. It wasn't crazy like when your hair is standing up, but it was a wind that just just came and blew on me, right? And there's trees all around. And I'm looking at the tops of the trees to see if I can see, okay, it's coming from the south. Well, I don't see the trees ain't blowing. I don't see the trees blowing. They're not swaying, but they should be. You know, the wind could have been low. It could have come up and down and come low. It could have done all that. But I was just looking. But regardless, nonetheless, until I was done, that wind was blowing. And I think I shared that on the Reaper Squad too. I don't correct me if I'm wrong, Steve, later on. But I think I shared that on the Reaper Squad too. Wind just came in and blew. Naturally, we're under the elements of the world, and we think because that's naturally, we think that's what it's supposed to be. But we're sons of the living God, family. We're sons of the living God. We can live like it, talk like it, walk like it. Some people might think, oh, well, but you commanded the wind. This sounds like witchcraft. I get it. They tried to accuse Jesus of witchcraft too. Not doing this in my name. I'm not doing this in the name of or somebody else in the name of the universe. No, it's in Jesus' name because we have been born into someone and that someone happens to be the creator of all things. Now, family, any questions, comment? We're going to end it there. But if we have any questions, <laughs> comments or concerns, now is the time to... Uh...